I have a condition called chimerism. Chimerism is a very rare condition. Basically, it means I am my own twin. I have a straight line down the center of my torso. On my left side only, my skin pigmentation is a different color than on my right side. And they kind of chalked it up to, it must be a birthmark. I have always been exposed to the entertainment business. My grandfather used to run Universal Studios at a very young age. I got into dancing. We'd all come out in our costumes and all of a sudden I'd look at all my girlfriend's stomachs and they were all one color. And that's when I first really realized that I was different. I started getting sick in my early teens. Every doctor I would go to, no one could figure it out. Finally, I did come across a doctor and he confirmed that I am a chimera. Chimerism is where two fraternal twin eggs fuse together in the womb. I absorbed my twin sister, so I carry her DNA and cells within my body. This is my sister's genetic makeup and this is my genetic makeup. Due to having two different sets of DNA and cells, I have two different immune systems and I have two different blood streams. My body treats my sister's DNA and cells as foreign matter and wants to clear it or get rid of it, but it can't. So unfortunately, I suffered from a lot of autoimmune flare-ups. It affects my daily life because I am so sensitive and or allergic just to everything and anything. As far as I know, there's not that much out there about chimerism, and even a lot of doctors themselves have never even heard of my condition. So it would be so helpful to get any tips or any kind of information in regards to my condition. Taylor is joining us today, and Taylor, you obviously have educated yourself a lot about this, but the audience, I'm assuming most of you have never heard of this. I'm hearing a lot of, wow, this is fascinating. And I know that you don't love being the object of that fascination, but is, is there a part of you that, yeah, you know what? I'm special. <laughs> because... Yes, um, you know, when I was young, I think, cause you know how kids are in general, you always wanna fit in and you know, that sort of thing. So when I was young, I think it was a little bit harder once I did realize that, you know, I was a little different. I used to ask my mom randomly, did I have a twin sister? Wow. Mom, mom, did I have a twin sister? And it was like all the time I used to ask her. And then with all my girlfriends, and you know, little girls do this in general, but mine was like an obsession. Every girlfriend, I wanted us to dress alike and look alike and be alike. And my mom wow. would be like, I don't know where all this is coming so you from. you had a sense. But now in my adult years, I gotta be honest, I'm like, you know, you have to embrace what God gave you. I have a beard. I get ridiculed every day. People question my gender. No matter what I do, it just keeps coming back. I first noticed the facial hair growing in when I was 15. I would shave once a week. There were times that people didn't notice and teased me about it, but I really didn't pay too much attention to it. About three years ago, it started to get really bad. I had to start shaving every day. I've tried hair removal creams, waxing, but every day it comes back. It takes me about three hours to get ready. I shave my beard, I pluck my sideburns, and start to do my makeup, trying to get the perfect coverage. No matter what I do to hide it, people still notice. When I go into stores, I do see the stares, the looks, comments. I moved from job to job to job to get away from the bullying. I haven't been to a doctor because I'm embarrassed. I fear what the results might be. If I never would have shaved my face, maybe it wouldn't have grown as bad as it did. What mistake did I make? When I go out and I do my makeup and I'm feeling confident, I feel like I can do anything in the world. But the real me is a freak and I just want to stay home. I feel like my excessive care is stopping me from being the person that I truly am. Please welcome Diamond to the show. <laughs> Diamond, I, watching you in that tape piece, it broke my heart because I see a beautiful woman sitting here before me. And I'm really proud of you for 
sharing your story because it's so much more common than you would ever in a million years realize. And I, it's just, I feel for you, you've been suffering all alone with this. What's been the hardest part for you? The hardest part for me is the distance I put myself like with my family. They always want to spend time with me and I'm always like, no, I don't want to spend time. I don't want to go out anywhere. I just, it, it, it hurts the amount of self-pity I put myself through every single day. That's where it hurts. Well, one of the reasons that Diamond came here is because obviously Diamond doesn't want to wonder anymore what's going on. There was obviously a lot more to be done. We connected Diamond with Dr. Nita for a full consult in hopes to reach a diagnosis. I'm going to the doctor for the first time to get checked out for my condition. I'm feeling really nervous. I'm Dr. Nita. It's nice to meet you. Nice to meet you. All right, so what's going on? Uh, I'm having a few issues growing, you know, excessive facial hair. How often do you shave or wax? I do it every day. Would you say that this hair growth has caused you to have depression at any time or anything like that? Yes. Have you ever thought about harming yourself? I have thought about it. I think about the things that people said every single day and it's just, it plays in my mind and I just can't get rid of it. Words hurt. Right. They do hurt. Although we're here to address the hair growth, we also need to address the emotional aspect right. of this. Because at the end of the day, I want you to feel good when you look in the mirror. Say it with me. Say, I, <laughs> I am, am beautiful. One more time. I am beautiful. Say it with <laughs> conviction. I am beautiful. I want to do a physical exam. We'll also do an ultrasound to look at your ovaries. And additionally, we need to get some blood work on you. Okay. Once we get all of those results back, mm -hmm. then I'll be able to give you a definitive diagnosis, mm -hmm. and then we're gonna make Diamond feel good about herself, okay. inside and out. So, uh, Dr. Nita, thank you, obviously, for seeing Diamond. I know the two of you connected. Diamond, did it feel, did it feel good to, to finally talk to a doctor about everything you've been going through and to get that exam and get some testing done? It did, it felt great. I felt a sense of relief, like a weight has been lifted off my shoulders that someone is finally listening to me and not judging me by my appearance, but what I, but what I tell them. My name is Brandon, I'm 26 years old and I have not hit puberty yet. I have been having facial hair growth, very little arm hair, leg hair, very little penile growth, very, very little testicle growth. No, no change in my voice. It affects every, everything I do from the moment I wake up until I go to bed. I have no dating life at all. I have no sex drive at all. I, I like women, but I don't really have a drive to go and pursue them. Everyone's different from me. Yeah, I don't feel like I'm at the material level I need to be. I don't, just, I don't look like a guy. I don't feel like it physically. I don't like to go out in public. I don't like to be seen. If I apply for a job, they think I'm younger and they don't want to hire me. They think I don't have the experience. I, I didn't think it was an issue until my early 20s because you always read online about late bloomers. You think eventually it's gonna happen. You don't think that it's never going to happen. I don't have a job right now, so I have no way of getting medical help. At this point, I'm desperate for answers. I just, I, I need to know what's wrong with me and how to fix it. Brandon's situation called for a male reproductive specialist, so we sent him to board-certified urologist, Dr. Aaron Spitz. Hi, Brandon. Hello. I'm Dr. Aaron Spitz. Oh, nice, nice to meet you. Meet you. Um, I had a chance to look at the chart you filled out for me. Okay. And I understand you're here to see me about concerns about your growth and sexual development. Is yes. that correct? Okay. And uh, you have difficulty with getting erections. Yeah. And you say that you've never reached a sexual climax. Okay don't really have any desire for sex. Now, one issue that may be a factor here, just looking at your notes, okay. is your potential to be fertile. Okay. Um, is this something that uh, you thought about or that concerns you? It, it does concern me. I would, <laughs> would you like to have kids if possible? Um, well, what I'd like to do is examine you. Okay. First, I'm just gonna okay. feel your neck, feel your glands here. Go ahead and swallow. 
Um, I'm gonna go ahead and listen to your heart and lungs now. I'm gonna take a listen to your lungs. Okay, Brandon, um, uh, I do agree with your assessment. Um, your genitals are underdeveloped, and it does appear that you have not completely gone through normal puberty changes. Yes. Um, one immediate concern I have is your hormone balance, and uh, it is highly likely that your testosterone is too low. Okay. So I'm going to have you get some blood tests that look at your testosterone level, as well as the controlling hormones that stimulate your testicles to grow. Okay. I'll follow up with you once the testing is complete and hopefully be able to provide you with a diagnosis as well as a treatment plan. That sounds great. Thank you very much.